अंकुर सर चेक करिए नाउ योर रिकॉर्डिंग इज स्टार्टेड गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन इट्स बेटर टू डिबेट अ क्वेश्चन विदाउट सेटलिंग इट देन टू सेटल अ क्वेश्चन विदाउट डिबेटिंग इट व्हाट डू यू थिंक अबाउट इट रुशाली मैम Yes you're right ma'am and that's the reason we have conducted this virtual debate activity for our students We have the spontaneous speakers of class 9 and 10 of the Van Public School Hapur with us who are going to share their views about their respective topics for the burning issues activity and bring out their hidden aptitude So what what are we waiting for let's start yeah. With COVID-19 being the current burning issue all over the world every mind is in dilemma that should we get vaccinated or not coming up with the some strong arguments in favor of the topic the vaccine war is mandating the covid vaccine ethically socially and practically correct we have akshita shikhar of class 9a The last time the schools were closed, we all told our friends and teachers, "See you tomorrow." We could never have imagined that tomorrow will take such a long time to come. With the onset of year 2020, the whole world shook up with one of the contagious diseases, COVID-19. It has led to dramatic loss of human life worldwide. The economic and social disruption caused by the pandemic is devastating. The pandemic has been affecting the entire population throughout the world. A wonderful morning to all and one respected teachers and fellow friends. This is Akshita Shikhar from 9th A, and today I'm going to speak in the favor of the motion. In this situation of epidemic crisis, the whole world suffered a lot, and many are still suffering. Ending this pandemic can only be achieved if together we unite to protect the vulnerable population to ensure that vaccines are available to everyone and everywhere. However there are so many advantages of mandating covid-19 vaccine i'm going to tell you some of them mandating covid-19 vaccine can let people resume many activities that they did before the pandemic as you can resume activities without wearing mask or staying 6 feet apart you can also reconnect your family and hang out with your friends the vaccine is the final step to our efforts to get back to a more normal way of life Getting vaccinated not only reduces your chances of being infected and getting seriously ill but it also prevents you from getting organ damage or a long term disease by choosing to be vaccinated you can protect not only yourself and your family but your community as well so vaccine is a safer choice mandating the vaccine is actually very effective and i think is the only way to end up the spread of threatening pandemic After mandating the vaccine there should be strict barriers for those who are not getting vaccinated as there should be fines and otherwise they should not be allowed to move out of their places now i'm very much glad to got this opportunity to debate on this fabulous topic and i'm also thankful to the warm hearted audience for listening to me so politely thank you Well said Akshita vaccine is the final step to our efforts to get back to more normal way of life next with us is Kinjal from 9B what not had happened during these years of covid war are we waiting for a more drastic situation other than this good morning everyone i am Kinjal Singh of class 9B today i feel blessed to gain this opportunity to express my view on the topic mandating vaccination and i am totally in support of the motion I don't get that why the people like my fellow opponent hold the view against mandating vaccination. If the legislation has had a dramatic effect on the public health and safety, such as indoor smoking ban and use of seat belts, etc., so why not do the same with the immunity system? I want to ask you all: What are we waiting for? Vaccination is one of the most effective public health invention in the world. For the for saving life and promoting public health is great. The confidence in safety and effectiveness is high. Then uh, the expected utility and mandating vaccination is greater. The, then the alternative and the penalties of course for non-compliance are proportionate. Can you even imagine the miserable fate of those children who lost their either either parents due to this deadly virus? 
I believe the argument of compelling reason to hold a strong case for considering mandating vaccination of COVID-19. Thank you. True, it really breaks our hearts to think about those innocent souls. But just as there are two sides to a coin, there are two sides to every story. Now I'd like to call on screen Erna from class 10A to put forward his views in opposition. Good morning, everyone. I am a boy. We honor to have been a part of this debate. The motion for today's debate is, is managing the COVID vaccine socially, ethically, and practically correct. Now, I, as today's opposition, strongly believe that this is not a different. Getting vaccinated being mandatory, it's pointless. Yes, we all know that everyone in the world have diverse body features depending upon the quality of life they live. It is not necessary. If the vaccine is fruitful for one, then it is for everyone. For instance, if 8 out of 10 people find vaccine useful, then what about the two people in the minority? We ignore them in the discussion of democracy. To support vaccination, people are trying to set an image of vaccine being a savior of nation. But the thing that is not being recorded to them is that there are other ways too that can help boost the immunity, not artificially, but naturally. Get enough sleep, eat more healthy fats, eat more fermented food, and engage in moderate exercise, stay hydrated, and what not can be done. These ways not only boost our immunity, but also make us internally and externally strong. Whereas vaccine once that gives an unbelievable pain in the shoulder, and one can even suffer with a severe fever above 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which even breaks autonomy and public health. And ethical negotiations cannot occur when there are considerable obstacles in accessing healthcare and requisite information. And for all these reasons, I strongly feel that this motion should not be adhered. Well, Arnav, you seriously gave us some valid points. To conclude this topic, I would rather say that a number of ethical considerations and caveats should be explicitly discussed and addressed through ethical analysis when considering whether mandatory COVID-19 vaccination is an ethically justifiable policy option. Wonderful. Yeah, thank you. Our next topic for the debate is India's National Education Policy 2020. Okay, so the first education policy came in 1968 by Indira Gandhi government. The second education policy came in 1986 by Rajiv Gandhi government which was later modified in the year 1992 by the government of P.V. Narsimha Rao. And now, after 34 years, comes India's new education policy by Narendra Modi's government. And I'm quite happy to see the, the perfectness of this policy. But as they say that there is no rose without a thorn. So this policy also bears some shortcomings according to our young achievers. So let's first hear from Yashi of class 9H, the benefits that this policy is going to shower on the future generation. Yes, Yashi. Well, ma'am, I believe that education is the most powerful weapon which we can use to change the world. New policy aims for universalization of education from preschool to secondary level with 100% gross enrollment ratio. Yes, with 100% gross enrollment ratio in school education by 2030. Now, we will discuss about some key points of NEP 2020. There will be no rigid separation between academic streams, extracurriculum, vocational streams in school. Emphasis on mother tongue till class 5. There is an activity based learning below class 2, and this is quite satisfactory according to my point of view. Don't you think so? From now, introduction of subjects from classes 3 to 5. Coding, which is very important. Coding from class 6. Multidisciplinary, flexible choice of subjects 
from classes 9 to 12 now i would like to compare nep 2020 with the education policy of 1992 10+2 structure the structure which was 10+2 is now changed into 5+c plus c plus 4 structure now advantages of nep 2020 The NEP 2020 focuses on students' practical knowledge instead of just pushing them towards the rote learning, and this is quite satisfactory according to my point of view. Because if the students will learn practically, then they can do much better in their future, and this will also help to develop a scientific temper from a very young age. Students. who were unable to go abroad due to multiple reasons will be able to experience it and get a global exposure and this will promote value based education so nep 2020 aims for making india a knowledge superpower and yes i am very glad to say that with the help of nep 2020 our india will be a knowledge superpower so thank you thank you so much have a nice day I do agree with you Yashi but along with appreciation there is also some criticism which focuses on the drawbacks of this new education policy so we have anukirti from class 10g who is criticizing the national education policy yes anukirti what do you have to say about this the challenge is to bring the study material in the mother languages The Indian government wanted to follow in the steps of other countries like France, Germany, China, where the foreign students needs to learn the language of the country to understand the country better. And India has 22 active languages and not one national language like in other countries. Education policy 2020 will further increase the differences between the sections of the society. While the students in the government school will be taught in their respective regional languages. the students in the private school will be introduced to english from the early classes this will further increase the students who will not be comfortable with english as they will be introduced to the subject about 7 years later than the students in the private school don't you think this will create differences between the two sections of the society under the new system one has to study for 4 years to complete their graduation however the question arises as to why the student will continue with the program if he or she can get the diploma in 2 years if he or she left the program midway then he or she could easily have 2 years experience of work which will be valuable in the long run to conclude i would say the intent of the policy seems to be better or ideal in many ways but it is the implementation where the key to success lies thank you Okay well said Anukriti while countries are at different points in the covid-19 infection rates worldwide there are currently more than 1.2 billion children in 186 countries affected by school closures due to the pandemic with this sudden shift away from the classroom some are still wondering about the positive and negative impacts of online classes Holding on to the same issue, I will take the opportunity to introduce you all with our next topic, that is, traditional education versus online education. Are online classes better than in person? So we have Cherry and Manya of Class Nine expressing their views in favor of the motion. Talk to people, connect with them, make e-learning sounds like it's a conversation between two people. Good morning to respected teachers, principal, ma'am, and my dear friends. Today, I'll share with you the stand to speak for the motion. Are online classes better than person classes? Why? It is true that as humans, we are more able to enable to person interaction, be it learning at school. However, with advancement with the internet and people are becoming more tech savvy, online classes are a great source of learning. the ability to rewind the lecture and watch it multiple times often helps the students to understand the concepts on their own 
Online learning is something that gives an opportunity to students to connect from expert with any part of the world. The COVID-19 pandemic has triggered new ways of learning. In recent months, the demand for online classes has risen significantly and it will continue doing so in the future. Online classes has a number of tools such as videos, PDF, podcasts, and teacher can use all these tools as a part of their lesson plan. Another advantage of online classes is that online classes can be recorded, achieved, and shared for future references also. Thank you. Spoken Cherry, Mania, take your turn, child. Online learning is rapidly becoming one of the cost effective ways to learn to educate the world's rapidly expanding workforce. On the topic today, I am Manish Sharma, stand before you to speak for the motion. On the topic traditional education versus online education, are online classes better than in person classes? Today, I am totally in the favor of motion. Why it is so? It is because through online education, parents can save their resources as well as money. How? Now, parents do not have to worry about the transportation facility, and that is helping to save money. Online education not only satisfies the parents as the child is sitting in front of them, but also helps students to study in a more concentrated and tabulated manner. And it allows students to attend classes from any location. So there is no need to travel. And it is also safe during the pandemic period. Online study is indeed a safe alternative to school education. Online education is affordable. On the other hand, school requirements are very expensive, such as transportation, accommodation, books cost. And we also know that the students who live in poor countries may don't go to good universities because it is very expensive. But if they buy a computer, they can take good lessons from everywhere in online education. Course materials are accessible for 24 hours a day and seven days a week. So students have ability to read and reread the lectures, discussions, explanations, and comments. Some students who feel hesitation in asking queries in front of everyone in normal classes can easily clear their doubts through personal chats with the teacher. In my own personal view, online classes are environment friendly. These classes reduce the use of paper, which reduces the rate of deforestation as well as global warming. And because of less usage of school transportation, pollution level also came down. This shows that online classes are better than the in-person classes. Thank you. So it was quite convincing. Despite the above discussed advantages, the negative impacts of the same cannot be overlooked. So in our opposition team, we have Bhumika and Prachi of class 10th with us with some strong points against the motion. Bhumika. Online education does not guarantee the social interaction. Hello and good morning to all my difficulty members and my dear friends. I, Bhumika of class 10 C, feel very honored to be given this opportunity to speak against the topic that is the traditional education versus the online education. Are online classes better than the person classes? Let's understand this. But before going through this, let's understand that what does this word online education basically mean? So it is a digital platform that totally relies on the internet for the interaction between the teacher and a student. There are not only the advantages that are set by my worthy opponent team, there are some disadvantages also of the online classes. What are those? Let me tell you. If you think about this topic more deeply, then you will get the disadvantages more than that of the advantages. Like it widens the social divide. Now you might be thinking that how it widens it. See, it is very difficult to shift the normal education to the digital education. As it gives an undue advantage to the rich and privileged class of society. However, homes are also not necessarily same for everyone. By making this online class mandatory since past two years, the authorities have proved, or you can say assume, that all households are alike. This can be true, but not for all. There are many young people with no facilities out there. 
also it lacks the socializing component let's see this also that how can this be a disadvantage see teaching and the learning exercise that takes place in the classroom is the best way for the education this is not enough it also weakens the critical thinking power and the political practices of the students because of this the students nowadays are the not only the political subject but the passive consumers of the educational content i have concluded by saying that the online education should never be replaced with the, should never be not be replaced with this as the real learning process is the best this social space is precious and needs to be changed at any cost thank you well said bhumika really impressive take the screen prachi online education is the newest and most popular form of distance learning today while online education is considered as the only solution present at the moment it comes with its own specific challenges and pitfalls Good morning, everyone. This is Prachi Kaushik of Class 10th B, and I take this opportunity to present my views against the motion. The very first reason of my strong disapproval is the widened social divide. Shifting education to digital platform gives an obvious and undue advantage to rich and privileged class of society, as they have better gadgets, stronger connectivity, and greater familiarity with the network and technology. If education is supposed to be a social leveler, then Weaker sections of society are pushed several yards behind even before the race has begun. Not taking much of your time, I would like to enlist some of the advantages of in-person classes. Well, when physically in school, students can concentrate better than at home because there are fewer distractions and fewer opportunities to leave the class. It results in more teacher-to-student time rather than remotely submitting the online assignments. In a school. students can develop deeper knowledge of the material and, and gives them gives teacher an opportunity to help the students by identifying their body language at last i want to conclude my statement by saying that online education do not offer the same immediate and regular impact as the traditional face to face classes do thank you well to sum up i would like to say that online education is of no harm till we limit the use of technological resources to what is desirous need of the hour achima please yeah absolutely rushali ma'am i agree with you well the next topic worth debating is has corona virus disrupted the indian economy well are the fears of economic disruption by the pandemic real or do you think they are overestimated are fears of virus impact on the economy exaggerated well how real are the fears of disruption let's ask from our students aparna tiwari class 9e arya bansal class 10f and rithunjay class 10e well let me tell you aparna is fully in favor of the motion that the pandemic has disrupted the indian economy to a large extent yes aparna what would you like to say regarding good morning to one and all present here myself aparna tiwari of class 9 and today i got the opportunity to share my views on the topic has covid-19 impacted indian economy yes i truly agree that the covid-19 impacted indian economy the covid-19 outbreak came at a time when india's economy was already slowing due to the persistent financial sector weaknesses and to contain it the government imposed a lockdown with restrictions on mobility of goods and people the outbreak of covid-19 brought social and economic life to a standstill isn't it and the study the for the, the focus is on assessing the impact on the affecting sectors such as aviation tourism retail capital market msme and oil the international and internal mobility is restricted and the revenues generated by travel and tourism which contributes 9.2% of the gdp will take a major toll of the gdp growth rate aviation revenues will come down by us dollars 1.56 billion Do you know the tourism industry is the worst affected due to the COVID crisis? 
and what you think about the impact of the COVID-19 on the migratory labor. The International Labor Organization in its report described the coronavirus pandemic as a worst global crisis since World War, since World War II. About 400 million people working informally in Indian economy are at a risk of falling deeper into the poverty after the pandemic. While the coronavirus pandemic is constantly growing and showing the little signs of the containment, its adverse impact on the economic growth of the country will probably be very serious. That's all. Thank you. Point well taken, Aparna. We have Arya Bansal with her convincing arguments to prove that the economy still has the chance to rise. And there are some positive aftermaths that the virus has left. Yes, Arya. Yes, definitely, ma'am. There is a very meaningful line said by Albert Einstein. In the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. Good morning, everyone. Myself, Arya Bansal from class 10th F, and I'm honored to speak in against of the topic, economic disruption caused by a pandemic. There are many lessons that we got from pandemic. Rather than just thinking only on the negative impact of the pandemic, we should also think on the positive impact, isn't it? Positive impacts such as demonetization was the shock that pushed India into the digital era as people adopted online payments. This pandemic forced everyone to adopt digital in everything. The average spend per online shopper is also projected to nearly double to $318. There is a progress of e-learning, which is less expensive too. So don't you think it helped our digital economy to improve? Now, let's just talk about some of the actions that are taken by the government. First of all, 21 days of lockdown by Prime Minister Mr. Narendra Modi. He addressed the nation saying that the coronavirus pandemic is an opportunity for self-reliance. He also proposed the Atmanibar Bharat Abhyan economic package. So our government has taken many measures to recover the economy. So now let's just talk about how the economy has recovered. There is a V-shaped recovery. The Times of India reported that the number of economic indicators such as GST collections, etc., showed significant improvement as compared to previous months. In April, the output of the core infrastructure sectors again saw high growth, again a consequence of a low base effect. So we can clearly see that the economy is now slowly but developing and progressing. And we should remember that every cloud has a silver lining and our life doesn't get better by chance, but it gets better by change. Thank you. I certainly agree with you, Arya. Uh, Mithyunjay from class 10E also has to say something about this. Yes, Mithyunjay. Oh, yes, I totally agree with Arya about the situation of COVID-19 impact on our Indian economy. Yes, COVID-19 has affected our Indian economy. So let us take a look on that topic. So what is COVID-19? COVID-19 is a virus that was originated in Wuhan, China. How did it affect our Indian economy? Well, it affected our Indian economy in a way such that the economy was left in ruins. Many people were jobless. Many people were homeless. Many people were, are not financially stable as they were before the pandemic. So we are only taking a look on the negative side. What are the positive sides? Let us take a look. So COVID-19 has provided huge opportunities to our economy to grow faster. Well, let us take this example. The first one is domestic market startups. How are they going to help the economy grow? Well, let us take an example that one startup, the owner of that startup becomes a job provider. So he is going to provide jobs to many people who were jobless before. They weren't providing any to the economy at all. They weren't contributing to taxes. And now they will pay taxes. I know it is a little amount by little by little, the ocean is made. So yes, our economy will grow faster than ever. Second point is online investment. What are online investment? Yes, Arya previously mentioned that online investments are the future of our country. I totally agree with that statement. Online investments are the future of our country's economy. How? Bitcoin and stock market. What are these? Let us talk about Bitcoin first. What is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a digital currency that holds quite a large amount of value in online currency market. So Bitcoin is quite large in the West and also starting to make a ground in our country and has also attracted a lot of brilliant people to invest in it. 
so how will it affect so we should not be surprised at all if we see some young billionaires in the upcoming years by solely investing in bitcoin second is stock market what is stock market a way of online investment how will it affect the country's economy at all so let us take a simple example that will clear all of our doubt well let us take example that one guy who was financially unstable invest in stock market he will become financially stable in the upcoming years people who have seen him will do the same so thus we will get a quite large amount of people becoming financially stable how does it will help the economy at all well it will help the economy indirectly it will help the gdp grow and the gdp is directly related to the economy so the economy will see a quite growth so what does we conclude from the above two examples yes our country has its own problem due to pandemic but opportunities are not natural we have to create and find them that is exactly what we did during the pandemic we have created and found the, the opportunities in form of startups by providing jobs and finding opportunities in form of online investment so our country will back better than ever and will achieve that long life dream of becoming the superpower in the 21st century thank you well great mitunjay and do you think what i think it also depends upon how the government of a particular country handles the things and as arya rightly stated every cloud has a silver lining so let's hope for the best over to rushali ma'am Yes, ma'am. I totally agree that this pandemic has left us with lot many confusions, indeed. So, appreciating the assiduous efforts of our students, I hope to emanate some more such educational events in the future. I would like to end on a positive note, quoting: "Time spent arguing is oddly enough almost never wasted." Thank you. Bye bye. Have a safe day. Thank you all. Bye bye. Have a good day. Have a nice day, ma'am.